Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Topological Complexity Seminar. Our speaker today is Kohei Tanaka from Shinshu University, who will lecture on the sectional category for maps of finite spaces. Please. Okay. Okay, let's start. Uh, thank you for the introduction, introduction, and thanks, organizers, for inviting me and scheduling this seminar at such an unusual time for me. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about sectional category in the setting of non-household space, spaces from a combinatorial viewpoint. Uh, my, recent, my recent research areas are uh, related to topological complexity and heterosexual category for combinatorial objects such, uh, such as simple complexes and finite spaces. Uh, because topological complexity and the risk category are special cases of sectional category, uh, I want to talk this topic in this uh, in today's seminar. And here is the overview of today's talk. Uh, we first recall uh, we first recall some fundamental definitions and properties of finite spaces and sectional category. And next, we consider how, how to approximate uh, the section category of map between simple complexes or regular suitable complexes by the section category of map between finite spaces. Finally, we will see some examples of section category and, and related to finite spaces. Because our finite spaces are not household in general, so some examples uh, behave a little differently from uh, how the household case. Okay, uh, let's start with some fundamental definitions and property of finite spaces. A finite space, of course, means a topological space with a finite number of points. That, uh, but that may sound a bit of strange to topologists who works with nice spaces like CW complexes or manifolds, uh, because a finite space with discrete, right? This is true for household spaces or more general T1 spaces. And the first important fact is any finite T1 space must be discrete. So there will be no interest for the project. So in this talk, we will deal with non T1 space, non T1 finite space in general. Of course, these are non-household, uh, non but we assume our finite spaces to be T0 and connected. T1 and T0 conditions are similar, but T1 is, of course, stronger than T0. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so uh, T1 space uh, is defined as a, as a topological space that any two points, and um, the uh, each point has an open neighborhood, uh, not including other points. So, uh, point even a point even a point a pair of points A and B, and A has an open neighborhood, not including B and B, uh, and moreover B has an open neighborhood not including as a point A. So uh, this is T1 condition. And this is equivalent to uh, the condition that a one point, a one point is closed, closed set. Okay. But T, uh, T0 uh, conditions uh, is similar to T1, but uh, at least one point of each pair point has an open neighborhood, not including the other point. So this is a different. Okay. So uh, we deal with a finite a finite space that T zero, but not T one in general. So such a space can be pathological for the process, but it has an interesting combinatorial structure and is closely related to the partial set, POSET. Okay. So 
So this means uh, this means that topology and com uh, home home topical properties of a finite space can be controlled by a partial order on on the space. Okay. So uh, let's see the relationship between finite spaces and posets. Okay. Uh, for for a point uh, for any point in a finite space, uh, it has it has a minimal open neighborhood defined as the intersection of all open neighborhood of the point. So like this. And this makes sense because the point, any point in a finite space has a, fi a finite number of open neighborhoods. And uh, the intersection is again an open set. Of course, this is not true for general spaces because any point has infinite open neighborhoods and the intersection is not open in general. And the partial order uh, on a finite space uh, is defined by the intrusion order of uh, on the minimal open neighborhoods. Okay, so a finite space can be uh, is a finite poset. And conversely, a finite poset can be regarded as a finite space. Open sets are called ideals or lower sets. Uh, Assets which uh, which are close and uh, lower order. From this viewpoint, uh, okay, uh, from this viewpoint, we can uh, we can identify finite spaces with finite posets. Uh, strictly speaking, these categories of finite posets and finite spaces are isomorphic. A map between finite spaces is continuous if and or if it is an order preserving map, that is posit map, you can say. And <clears throat> moreover, we can translate compilation into the term of posit maps to maps, uh, to continuous map uh, on finite spaces that order preserving map, that it order preserving maps are home pick. If and only if we have a finite uh, sequence of maps connecting between uh, these two maps, okay. So the bunch of finite space, uh, the, the bunch of maps uh, between finite spaces, and uh, with these relations, that's fine. The relations and uh, the order on the maps, the maps of finite spaces, uh, defined as the value, uh, the value given by the value. On the other. Okay. And a uh, home P theory of finite spaces was developed by Stone, and I will introduce some uh, some of them. Uh, so we want to introduce the notion of up bit point and down bit point and uh, bit point. Bit point is is a up bit point or a down bit point. And a uh, bit point is roughly a uh, home topical reducible point in a finite space. If we have a bit point in a finite space, the space removed a bit point is a deformation retract of the original space, and these have the same home p type. So, uh, if if p is an up bit point, and uh, if and this type of space has a unique maximal point, so we note such a maximum point Q, and we have a map P to uh, uh, P removed from uh, remove the up uh, the up bit point small P, and <clears throat> uh, we have a map defined by uh, P to the unique maximum point Q. So uh, this is an order preserving map, and uh, this is a home pin of so the inclusion. So we have uh, the, we have a deformation retract to the removed uh, to the space removed the bit points. Okay, and so uh, so we obtain uh, 
So we have obtained a small, smallest south space uh, having no bit points by successfully removing bit points in a finite space uh, without changing the home bit type. This is called uh, this is called a core. So uh, and we call a finite space is minimal if it has no bit point. So a core is a minimal finite uh, minimal finite space, which is a deformation retract of the original space. So we have uh, a smallest uh, bit type in a finite space. And the home types of finite space are completely classified by cores. So two finite spaces are home equivalent if and or if they, are, uh, they, have, they have isomorphic cores. So especially a finite space is contractible if and or if the core consists of a single point. So we can remove bit points one by one. And finally, only one point left. So this is equivalent to uh, the condition contractible. <clears throat> and uh, and minimal finite spaces have the following property. If a continuous map from uh, minimal, uh, minimal finite spaces, P from uh, itself, and, and is uh, home, peak, uh, home peak to the identity, then uh, this map must be equal to, uh, must be identity, okay? So this implies that any two minimal finite spaces are home peak equivalent if and or if they are homeomorphic, okay? Yeah. Okay, and next we introduce the classifying space of finite space. A finite space is generally non house but we uh, but we can construct a simple complex called the classifying space or a Joda complex from a finite space. And the cross uh, the classifying space is the geometric realization of the simple complex, which consists of totally ordered subsets. And um, n simplex in the classifying space corresponds to a total total ordered n plus one element formed uh, formed like this. Uh, this is called an um, n chain in P. And uh, conversely, uh, given a simple complex or shader complex, we have the face faucet consisting of simplices or cells with the inclusion of the and the face faucet, uh, the following is a uh, well-known result by Marco. Uh, given a, the face faucet of a regular CW complex has the same weak home P type of the original space. Moreover, the classifying space of a finite space has the same weak home P type of the original finite space. And we denote uh, we not, uh, the natural home P uh, natural weak home peak equivalence from the classifying space to the original space by row, and we use this rate. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's see an example of classifying space or a finite space. Uh, let P be a finite space or poset uh, with six points described uh, described by the Hass by the Hass diagram like uh, like this. So we draw a line between uh, between comparable elements and high positions express greater elements. Okay, and the classifying space of this finite space uh, is uh, becomes the surface of an octahedron, which is isomorphic to a two sphere. Okay, so uh, so this finite space. Uh, is the face faucet of the minimal regular cell function of two sphere. So, uh, so it consists of uh, two vertices, uh, two vertices and two edges. Okay, so two sphere, uh, two vertices and two edges and two disks. So uh, now. Uh, two buses A and F, and 
Q edges B and D and two disks, two disks C and D. And, and this face posit, uh, it uh, expresses uh, this final space. So final space. And the and 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 the crash finding space of uh, the original phase posit uh, becomes uh, becomes a, a the very same subdivision of the original uh, space. Okay, so in general, uh, the crash finding space of the phase posit is the very same subdivision original uh, cell complex. Okay. Okay, uh, next uh, we recall the notion of the sectional category and the sectional number because we want to deal with non vibrations. Uh, so we separately define the sectional number based on strict sections and the sectional category based on home P sections. Okay. So the sectional number of a map uh, is defined as one less than the smallest size of open cover, uh, open cover of the base space, where each open set admits a strict section of the map. So, if such no, uh, if no such number exists, uh, we do not sectional number is infinite. Okay. Similarly, the sectional category is defined using home P sections instead of strict sections. Okay. Um, and clearly. The sectional category is smaller than or equal to the sectional number. And, and these are equal if uh, uh, for vibrations, okay? Mm -hmm. And the risk category and topological complexity are important examples of sectional category. And the risk category of a map of a space X is expressed as the sectional category of now pick map to X. And in particular, the RS category of space X agrees with a map from a contract, uh, contracted domain to the X. Okay. And the topological complexity is defined as a sectional category of free pass vibration uh, given, uh, given by the start point and the end point of a, uh, of a pass. Hmm. Okay, uh, and an um, important property of sectional category, uh, the sectional category of a map is always smaller than or equal to zero category of the domain space, okay? So for any map F, it X, we have sectional category F is smaller than or equal to cat X, okay? This is true even uh, in finite spaces. Mm, this is already true. Okay, uh, now the prim uh, preliminary is uh, over. Let's move on to the next topic about sectional category of maps between finite spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, first, uh, the sectional category of the induced map between the crash finding space is uh, the crash finding space map BF, and the sectional category of BF is smaller than uh, what we call to the sectional category of the original map F. Okay. This in uh, this in in equality holds uh, because uh, uh, this is because a small amount of open sets in a finite space. Okay, a finite space has a finite number of open sets and open covers, while the crash finding space is of course has to and uh, has infinite fine, infinite open sets. So we can choose open cover flexibly, but uh, but a finite space has only finite uh, open cover. So uh, this inequality holds. Hmm. Moreover, uh, this uh, so moreover this inequality uh, can be strict, and the difference between them can be arbitrarily large, arbitrarily large. So all those, uh, so, uh, so the 
the difference between them can be up to grass. But uh, also the sexual category of of f of f a finite of a map between finite space may not be a good estimate of the sexual category of pf. But the but the operation can be refined using the very same subdivisions. And and here the very same subdivision of a finite space consists of uh, chains with the inclusion there. In other words, uh, SDP is defined as the face faucet of the crash finite space. Okay. So uh, SVP consists of uh, totally all the subsets of P and is equipped with a natural map, natural weak on P equivalence map, tau, and <coughs> from SDP to P, uh, sending, sending a chain to the greatest element, the last element, Pn. Uh, so uh, we also use this map later. And uh, we also define the case variance subdivision inductively, so like this. Mm -hmm. And the map from the case, uh, case subdivision to the original space as a, uh, as a foreign, com uh, foreign composition of those maps, OK? So let us define a new invariant related to sectional category, taking bias and subdivision into account. Uh, we consider the smallest number of open sets covering the case uh, bias and subdivision Q. So open covering of SDKQ, uh, satisfying uh, the condition like this. Okay. So, uh, so it uh, it looks like uh, a home P section, but uh, but SI and uh, the composition of SI and F is home, uh, is home to uh, tau uh, defined before. Mm -hmm. And uh, and when k when k equals zero, uh, in this case, this is uh, this agrees with the standard section category of f. And and we call this invariant uh, case section category for convenience. And the following is, uh, fundamental properties of the case sectional category. But if k becomes larger, then the case sectional category becomes smaller. Okay. And the sec and the sectional category of BF, the cross triangle space map, is smaller than the case sectional category for any k. Okay. And <clears throat> And furthermore, for sufficiently large k, uh, these are equal. Uh -huh. uh, this proof of uh, the proof of this theorem is essentially based on the classical simplicial approximation theorem. I have shown some similar results for topological complexity and various category, but the original idea came from the Gonzalez work uh, for of simplicial version of topological complexity. So many ideas in this talk were inspired by his and his collaborators works. Uh, thanks, I would like to thank them and uh, thank them here. Anyway, uh, let's turn to the final topic. Uh, first, we compute the sectional category of the- Can I ask a question? Uh-huh. A question. Okay. Uh, this is related to this natural map tau from mm -hmm. the subdivision of uh, the poset to the poset. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if this map is uh, some kind of uh, adjoint or coadjoint to some other. Mm -hmm. It has the, the form of an adjoint map. Adjoint map. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, adjoint, 
Azurent map. Uh, what is that Azurent map? Mm -hmm. Oh, when, when, when you have uh, two functors mm -hmm. uh, going from one category A to a category B and another function going back, mm -hmm. you have a relation with the two compositions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, essentially, when you have uh, that, that you can, let's see, if you can go from the double from if the fun, if the functors have are f and g, mm -hmm. then you, can, you have an equality between yeah, that yeah. from f g of some object into some other thing, and in, uh, when when you move the functor from one side to the other, this is okay. Okay, in this case, uh, uh, process to the Shimsha complex. Uh, the face force face force functor and the cross rank space functor uh, are joint, and the tau is the natural adjoint map. Okay, yeah, yeah ah, okay, I it's very uh, nice suggestion, and yeah, uh, yes, uh, mm -hmm. yes, um, I I did not consider such idea, but uh. It's, I think it's very interesting and uh, we can uh, we can extend such uh, general idea. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it might, it might be useful in some some other uh -huh. or, or some other later developments. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we uh, we introduce some example of. Uh, section category uh, or maps between finite spaces. So, well, uh, first we compute the section category of the weak home equivalence uh, row uh, into this, uh, this before and <coughs> associated with the cross line space or finite space. Mm -hmm. So, we will consider compi sections of row. But the continuous map from a finite space to a T1 space must be constant. Uh, so hence, uh, if we have a home P section of row, or more generally a continuous map from a T1 space to a finite space P, then the, the intrusion uh, of, uh, from, an open, uh, from an open set to, to P uh, must be non-peak, okay? So, so uh, this implies that the sectional category of row equal to zero category of P. Okay. So if we have a uh, P section, so it uh, it must be a narrow peak. So uh, sectional category row uh, is cap is just cap P. Okay. Uh, Therefore, the Rs category of a finite space is expressed as the sectional category of a weak home P equivalence. This fact looks, looks slightly strange in the setting of nice space like C W complexes. Uh, if P if P is a C W complex, then a weak home P equivalence to P has a global home P section by the Whitehead theorem. Hence, the sectional uh, category of a weak home P equivalence in C W complexes must be zero not equal to their category of the common mean. Uh, of course, if the common mean is not contractible. So uh, this is, uh, this happens uh, in finite space, not, not general space, okay? So <coughs> uh, this is the first example. And second example, uh, we next see the sexual number and sexual category of tau uh, Associated to the Bryson subdivision. Okay. So, the, but the next proposition uh, suggests that uh, that it is difficult to construct strict section of tau. Okay. So, uh, the uh, the sectional number of tau is zero if p has no lower branch. Uh, lower branch uh, means uh denotes a particle like this so uh so in in the has diagram um so 
it it is expressed as something like that. Okay. So if uh, if p as uh, not including such tuple, then sectional category tau is zero, and otherwise uh, the sectional category uh, of tau is infinite. Uh, okay. Uh, it, so if uh, a finite space P has no lower, no such a lower branch. So uh, the house diagram P uh, can be described uh, as a tree like this. So, um, so growing up branch. So, so a tree is something like that. So it, it has no lower branch. And any point, uh, so any point air in P so any point A we have a unique uh, unique maximal chain so that is mm, like that so so uh, we have a um, maximal chain ending at uh, ending at A so this uh, uh, this gives a strict section of tau. So it gives p to SVP, something like something like that. So so strict section. And uh, this this maximal chain is let's say okay. So this is a uh, the strict section of tau. And we can construct a section, strict section of tab. Okay. And uh, I could I ask a question, please? Hi. Uh -huh. So, okay. isn't it true that the category has a bound by minimal elements in a finite uh, post set? So, you're saying that if it has a minimum element, then yeah. the category is zero? Uh -huh. So, uh, so cat, uh, se sectional category A of tau B, uh, is smaller than cat P, and uh, cat P is smaller than uh, maximal points, the number of maximal points of P, because uh, now uh, we define an open set. Uh, is crossed under lower, uh, lower ah, branch. I see. Uh, okay, so this is true, but, mm, but if you okay. take the dual of the post set, yeah, then... opposite post is, yeah, uh, yes, minimal, uh, the number of minimal elements is, uh, is an upper bounds, yeah, that's right. Okay, ah, okay, thank you. Okay, so, uh, Okay, and this is sectional uh, category of tau. Okay, so next we see sectional uh, sectional number of tau. Okay, next we uh, we will see sectional category of tau. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the sectional category of tau p uh, behaves like zeroth category of p. So uh, sectional category tau p goes to zero if and or if p is contracted, and and this is a home peak a home peak invariant, and, okay. And uh, and let us recall the sectional category tau p is more than or equal to zero category p, okay. And so many examples show that sectional category tau p agree with zeroth category of p. And so at first I suspected that these are always the same, but uh, but I recently found a strict inequality case of this. Uh, uh, so so uh, there is a case that the inequality is strict. Uh, I want to introduce this example. 
So there is a finite space P uh, such that there is cut, uh, that there is category is two, while the sectional category of tau is one. Uh, this example is, uh, explains the phase four set of a simple decomposition of, of a torus. So, uh, so both, uh, both sides of the square are identified. And of course, top and the bottom lines are also identified. Okay. So uh, now we have three strongly crossed through subcomplexes, uh, shaded, uh, shaded subcomplexes, which is uh, covering, uh, covering the whole P. So uh, this phase posit uh, provides, uh, provides contractive open sets covering P. And hence, the RS category and the stronger S category of V uh, are smaller than or equal, equal to two. And moreover, the RS category of the crash-finding space, that is torus, is two. This is a row bound of cat P. And hence, uh, cat P equal two, okay? And uh, furthermore, we have two subcomplexes uh, in figure three, so two subcomplexes, shaded subcomplexes, and unshaded white color subcomplexes. We have two subcomplexes covered uh, covered by uh, covered torus, covering torus, and uh, and so we first focus on uh, shaded subcomplex. So this subcomplex is strongly proximal to the thick, this thick line. Uh, so uh, we can remove uh, these super vertices and uh, cross through to this uh, lines. Okay. So this uh, this line consists of eight eight vertices. One, two, three. Four, five, six, five, six, seven, eight, and this is identified. So eight vertices with eight edges. Okay, eight vertices and eight edges. And uh, and the diagonal. So. This diagonal consists of one, two, three, four, four vertices and four edges. Okay, so that uh, and the Bayesian subdivision of the diagonal line consists of eight points and eight edges. Okay, so we can uh, so there's a natural ending from. Uh, this thick line to the subdivision of the diagonal. Okay, so uh, so <clears throat> we want uh, we have a map. Uh, we have a map from uh, such. So let uh, let us denote this uh, shaded complex K. So K uh, K is strongly partial to L and L is uh, is is uh, naturally identified with uh, the delta uh, the diam the uh, the Bryson subjunct delta the diagonal and 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 uh, uh, we have the inclusion of uh, so SD so P D K okay. Mm -hmm. okay whole whole space whole subcomplexes so uh, okay, uh, so this uh, this thick line can be embedded into the diagonal in SDP. So hence uh, we have 
uh, home P section of tau P. Uh, and so if we have uh, taken the face posets, so we have uh, home P section uh, of tau. Okay. So shaded complex, shaded subcomplex uh, has a home P section of tau. And similarly, the white color subcomplexes, subcomplex also has a sectional category, uh, uh, home P section of, uh, of tau. So white, uh, white color uh, subcomplex is also uh, embedding uh, and cross you to this thick line. So this thick line is identified with uh, the bison subdivision of the diagram, okay? Uh, so, uh, so this case uh, is uh, this space. Uh, this finite space has there is category two and the section of category one. Uh, so the so this inequality is strict in this case. Okay. okay uh, finally. Uh, we uh, consider the sectional number of pi. Uh, pi is associated with the configuration spaces. So it is, a, uh, it is called a final universe vibration in the case of M is manifold. So recall that the order configuration space of K points in a space X, uh, that con uh, so it consists of uh, K distinct points in X. And the position induces the map from the K points configuration space to the R point configuration space when there is smaller than or equal to K. And in this talk, we consider the case of case of K is two and there is one. And the map is denoted by pi. Okay. And Zapata and Gonzalez showed the ratio between the sectional number of pi and the fixed point property for household spaces. Okay. So uh, here is a, uh, here a space X has the fixed point property, uh, FPP for short. If every continuous map from X to X itself has a fixed point. Okay. And Zapata and Gonzalez proved that the sectional number of pi is less than or equal to one for for house of space. Okay, and and by using this key lemma, they showed an interesting result. A house of space X has the FPP if and or if the sectional number of pi equals to one. Uh, as a control as a contraposition, X does not have the FPP if and or if the sectional number of pi is zero. Okay. It was very impressive for me because I did not expect the sectional number is connected to the fixed point property. And so, and so I consider the Zapata and Gonzalez results for non-household setting in finite spaces. And as a result, for finite space P, the sectional number of pi by P takes three cases depending on the number of maximal points. So uh, in a household space, any, any point is closed set uh, itself, but it, not, it does not hold for finite spaces. Okay. We, sh uh, we should pay attention, pay attention to that. However, uh, however, in a finite space, any maximal point is a closed set. Okay. Hence, if we have at least two maximal points, uh, too much for P1, P2, uh, the, uh, the complement provides two open sets, two open sets covering the finite space. And we can construct three sections uh, like this, uh, like this. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, the section number is less than y equal to one in this case. And this is the same idea as Zapata and Gonzalez, well, Gonzalez proof. The problem in the case is that a finite space has a unique maximal point. So we can take only one maximal point. 
In this case, the sectional category is infinite because such a space is contractible and has and has JFPP. Okay. And if we have, uh, if we assume that the sectional category of pi is, it, it is finite, uh, it, it must be zero because P has unique maximal point. And if an open set includes the maximal point, then the open set must be the whole P. So the smallest size of open cover must be one, must be one. okay? So, uh, hence P has, uh, so the sexual, and, um, Sexual number of uh, sexual number of pi uh, is zero, and p has it means p has p has a global stroke section of pi. So <coughs> p has a global section of pi, but uh, but but if we consider uh, the composition of the uh, second provision uh, PR2, then uh, the composition is a map from P to P. And this is fixed point, uh, fixed free, uh, fixed point free map. Okay. And uh, so this is a contradiction. And the sexual number is infinite. In the case of finite space, has a unique maximum point, and uh, and we can show the following theorem: a finite space P has the FPP if and only if uh, if and only if the sexual number of pi is one or infinite. Okay, uh, so uh, this is uh, my result and. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, listening. Thank you. Thank you very much.